five, four, three, two, one. Ignition. And lift off of Falcon 9. Go SpaceX, go Transport 14. SpaceX launches human remains, re-entry capsules, and more on Transporter 14 rideshare mission. Transporter 14 carried 70 different payloads, including a special memorial capsule containing cremated remains and DNA samples. A Falcon 9 rocket carrying 70 payloads for a variety of customers lifted off from California's Vandenberg Space Force Base today on a rideshare mission known as Transporter 14. Transporter 14 is lofting microsats, cubesats, and re-entry capsules, including one that's carrying cremated human remains and human DNA on a memorial mission. I've just read the first several sentences of this Space.com article about the Transporter 14 mission, and no mention whatsoever was made about arguably the most important cargo on board unless you want to count this thing as being a re-entry capsule which I guess technically it is but it's actually a spacecraft and this mission marks an enormous step forward for European spaceflight and not only that the exploration company Nix which had a very impressive although not perfect first test flight has the potential to land human beings on the moon with proper investment. A human landing system that doesn't require refueling, doesn't require multiple launches, and could get the job done if this company were properly invested in. All of this and more coming at you on The Angry Astronaut right now. Almost three years ago, I conducted an interview with the Exploration Company, and frankly, very few people took what this company was doing seriously. I dubbed their spacecraft, called the Nix, the European Crew Dragon, and lots of people said that I had no right to be doing something like that, given that this was just an idea on paper, and a test article was still years away. Although this wasn't entirely true, because the exploration company was already building their test article, which flew on an Ariane 6 mission. Sadly, that rocket did not perform perfectly, which is why their experiment went south. But then, undaunted, they launched a second test article, an upgraded version compared to the first one, which conducted an amazing first test flight. Almost everything went perfectly on this test flight, with every stage going smoothly, including the re-entry, and the only failure being, as near as we can tell right now, the opening of the parachutes. That was the one part of the flight that didn't seem to go very well, and that can't really be blamed exclusively on the exploration company, because the company that provided the parachutes were the same people who provide parachutes for Crew Dragon and Boeing Starliner. Their parachutes that should have worked, and given their high degree of success with SpaceX, and frankly even Starliner, I'm confident that this one problem can be quickly resolved. The heat shield was the big issue, along with the spacecraft's maneuverability in orbit and capability of turning the heat shield precisely to the atmosphere to survive re-entry, and Nix seems to have passed all of those tests with flying colors. Now, to be clear, this was a 60% scale test article, not the full-sized vehicle, but still pretty close to the real thing, being over 2 meters in diameter and capable of carrying up to 300 kilograms worth of cargo. And by the way, it did have payloads on board, which successfully activated while it was in flight, and Nix was able to provide communication to the payloads while the spacecraft was in flight. 
By the way, if you're curious as to who this company is, the Exploration Company, they are a company that was founded by former Airbus employees, and their CEO, Helene Hubie, was Airbus's vice president for the Orion Spacecraft's European Service Module. In other words, this lady has already worked on spacecraft that are capable of going to cislunar space. But check out the rapid progress that this company is made with a tiny amount of money. Helene founded the Exploration Company of August of 2021, in other words, 12 months prior to my interview with them, with only $50,000 in the bank and a small team of four people. Three years later, the company now has 200 employees and recently announced that it had raised $160 million in Series B funding. Actually, overall, they've raised $200 million and only $20 million has been spent on this test article, plus $10 million for the SpaceX rideshare, $30 million for an orbital spacecraft that very nearly got back to Earth. As I said, everything succeeded, including the heat shield and as near as we can tell it was just the parachutes that led to the failure of the spacecraft meaning that chances are we're going to see a very successful second test flight before they move on to the full scale article and by the way the exploration company will probably receive another 200 million dollars from the european space agency this year because this spacecraft successfully demonstrated propulsion in space and re-entry the Failed parachutes should not disqualify this spacecraft from receiving additional funding because the European Space Agency is trying to develop their own sovereign resupply capability not only to the International Space Station but also to future commercial space stations. And as long as the heat shield did its job, which apparently it did, that should qualify the exploration company from receiving that additional funding. So why? Why am I so excited about all of this? I mean, it's just a resupply spacecraft, kind of like SpaceX Dragon, not a whole lot more ambitious than that, right? Well, wrong. Actually, the exploration company is designing Nix to be a far more ambitious spacecraft as time goes on, capable of carrying at least four astronauts to low Earth orbit to begin with, but the long-term goal for the exploration company is and has always been the moon. Unlike most low Earth orbit spacecraft, the Nix is equipped with a three-tiered propulsion system consisting of the Mistral, which is nothing more than low toxicity thrusters, and the Hurricane, which is an in-orbit refillable lunar engine powered by cryogenic liquid biomethane and liquid oxygen. In other words, a Methalox rocket engine. And then on top of that, they they have the Typhoon, a high thrust full flow staged combustion cycle reusable rocket engine clearly designed to push even heavier payloads out to lunar destinations. So here's the thing, even though this company is in its early stages of developing this spacecraft, it really isn't any further behind than Blue Origin is right now with their Blue Moon spacecraft. Keep in mind that Blue Moon Mark 1 is little more than a scaled down version of the crew version of Blue Moon that's supposed to be putting astronauts on the lunar surface by the early 2030s. And so if Blue Moon can be a backup spacecraft to Lunar Starship, which is running into all kinds of problems right now, why doesn't the European Space Agency fund the exploration company to supercharge the development of this spacecraft? Think about what might be possible with a human-rated Nix vehicle designed to go to the moon. Keep in mind that the full-scale Nix weighs about 8 metric tons. Now, a human-rated Nix might be upgradable, say, to around 12 metric tons or so. Falcon Heavy could definitely get a vehicle of that size out to cislunar space, and then Nix could carry astronauts from the Orion spacecraft in lunar orbit down to the lunar surface and then back again to Orion. It wouldn't even need a heat shield, which would cut down on its mass even further. And also keep in mind, this is a reusable spacecraft that doesn't require a whole lot of propellant, meaning that future missions could carry a few tons of 
of propellant back to the Nix for it to be used on additional landing missions to the lunar surface. Yeah, it doesn't carry a whole lot of payload. We're only talking about a simple transportation system for a few astronauts, but keep in mind what's been spent already. $2.89 billion has been invested in the Lunar Starship HLS system, and $3.4 billion has been invested in Blue Moon. And what do we have to show for it thus far? Lunar Starship seems as far away from putting humans on the surface of the moon as it has ever been, and Blue Origin has yet to debut even a scaled down test version of their Blue Moon spacecraft, whereas the exploration company has at least put something into space, something that maneuvered properly, communicated properly, re-entered properly, and as near as we can tell, only had a problem with its parents. Parachutes. Seems to me that a billion dollars invested in the exploration company might be money well spent on a backup system for Lunar Starship and for Blue Moon. Because keep in mind, the exploration company Nix does not require any refueling to get to the moon. As a matter of fact, the design has so much propellant in its service module that it can hop from one location on the moon to another, at least the cargo version can. And so therefore, if you're talking about all of the hoops that Nix has to jump through from where it is now to becoming a lunar lander of some kind, it actually has fewer steps to go through because it doesn't require any refueling. It's just a basic lunar lander designed to get a couple of people down to the lunar surface and back. Of course, it's also designed to deliver cargo a few tons at a time, but we're still talking about an HLS system that could, at least in theory, get the job done in a single launch, which is a lot less complicated than the other solutions that we're working on right now as we try to beat China China to the moon before 2030. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And also, please keep in mind the merch store closes tomorrow. You have until midnight UK time on the 26th of June to order our current catalog of shirts and hoodies. I cannot begin to emphasize enough just how comfortable these garments are. Far better quality than any other company I ever worked with before. Thank you so much, Sunline, for putting together this incredible stuff and also keep in mind I'm giving away two Amuamua shirts to two random supporters on my GoFundMe page right now less than 60 people have contributed although they've been so generous I'm over 60% of the way now to our final goal thank you so much for that so keep your eyes open and we have yet another moon related episode coming up tomorrow although this one talking about where China is in their current progress and just how close they're coming to overtaking NASA on the race back to the moon. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, stay angry about space.